Welcome back. Welcome to this step 13. In this step, we would look at a couple of important features of Spring Boot, Spring Boot Actuator and HAL Browser. We would look at some of the services that Spring Boot Actuator exposes and we'll try and execute a few of those services. Let's begin with adding in the dependencies for Spring Boot Actuator and HAL Browser as well. So Spring Boot Actuator is basically uh, kind of the monitoring application uh, for your REST services. So until now we have created a few REST services. So you want to expose metrics around it. You want to see the status of the system, whether it's having enough free space, uh, what are the beans that are configured, what are the properties that are exposed, and uh, what are the mappings that you are providing. All that kind of stuff can be exposed to the outside world using Spring Boot Actuator. HAL Browser kind of provides a UI around the Spring Boot Actuator services so that you can click around and directly browse through all the information that Spring Boot Actuator provides. You can kind of think of Spring Boot Actuator as the one which provides the data and the HAL Browser as the one which provides the UI so you can browse through the data. Let's get started. Let's start with adding the dependencies for Actuator and HAL Browser. I have uh, both these dependencies in here. It's Spring Boot Starter Actuator and Spring Data Rest HAL Browser. Uh, you can look at the group IDs here as well. So I just copy them in. Okay, there you go. So now I've uh, pasted them into our dependencies and let me restart the server as well. So let's go ahead and uh, restart our application. I've killed it here and right click run as Java application. So now uh, the application is starting up now and let's start with the URL which is exposed by the HAL browser. So localhost 8080 actuator. So let's go down there. Okay, there you go. This is the stuff which comes out. Basically, we are trying to explore the slash actuator URL. So let's go and that's where we are right now. And you'd see that the actuator is written down a list of links. So list to the uh, current thing, list to the heap dump, uh, list to the config properties, auto config, trace, info, health, mappings, metrics, environment, and beans as well. So let's try and look at some of these right now. So let's start with beans. So if I go to beans, what I would see is all the beans that are configured inside the application. You can see welcome controller, welcome service, survey controller, survey service. So these are all the spring beans that are configured as part of our application. All these are exposed by the spring actuator at the URL localhost 8080 slash beans. If I go to the postman and do a get request, to slash beans ah, okay application slash xml actually it should be application slash json so let's do that you can see that all the details are written back what we're seeing in actually is the fact that uh, the url the url localhost colon 8080 slash beans is exposed by spring boot actuator and the hal browser gets the data from it and shows it in a very easily readable format so it's nothing but uh, like we uh, the HAL browser is kind of a way where you can actually execute your uh, services. So for example, instead of uh, localhost 8080 slash beans, I want to execute some one of the welcome stuff or let's say we execute the welcome controller slash welcome. Click go and you can see what is the response coming back. It's saying response body is this and it's saying the response headers are this and this and this. And also you can, let's try and hit one of our uh, survey controller services. Let's say I would hit survey one question service. There you go. So it's returning a sur uh, status of 200. That's good. And also you can see that the content type is application JSON, HAL JSON. And you can see that all the questions are written back. So this is basically what it is. So it's when I execute the URL, what it does is it executes the REST service and displays the data with uh, which the REST service returns back. So HAL Browser is basically kind of an UI, it's nothing else. So HAL Browser is a UI where I can browse through all the REST services. Right now, we are looking at slash actuator, which is exposing a lot of uh, the services, which uh, like services from Spring Boot Actuator. The first thing we'll look at is the heap dump. This is very useful to debug problems. Let's say there's a uh, applica application crash or something, then you can use the heap dump to find out what's going on. Here, I mean, right now there is no application crash as such, so it's there's nothing in here. Uh, same with dump. The config properties is another useful thing. Let's now look at config props. As we discussed earlier, in 
Spring Boot, you can configure everything using the application load properties. So you can configure, for example, the logging level and things like that through the application load properties. There is a lot of other stuff you can control through the application load properties. All these config properties show what are the different things that can be configured from the application dot properties file. So if you look at here, so I'm searching for spring dot dev tools and I've gone to the bottom of the response almost. So here you can see uh, different properties that are present for spring dot dev tools. So if you say spring dot dev tools uh, live reload is equal to false, then the live re reload gets disabled or you can say colon as well. So this gets disabled and you can also configure other stuff in here. You can see whether you want to enable debug or not, proxy is enabled or not, restart is enabled or not, and there's a quiet period as well. So all this kind of stuff can be configured uh, in the application.properties. For example, there is a spring.mvc. So you want to configure the spring MVC stuff. So you can say spring.mvc. Let's say you want to change the locale, uh, default locale, you want to provide it, or you want to provide uh, like a local resolver. I mean here it's uh, accept header. So basically it looks at the header uh, For something called accept if you want to change that you can change that in here and also uh, Here there's a configuration which says throw exception if no handler is found So if you want to throw an exception if no handler is found then you can make it true then it would throw an exception if a specific handler is not found for your request and similar to that the disk space so you want to configure the path uh, to something so uh, you can uh, change that as well in here so all the things that you can configure uh, through application properties are listed in the next thing is the auto config uh, as we know there is auto configuration is one of the most important features of spring boot and that's where the magic of spring boot comes in if you want to see what are the all, what are all the auto configuration stuff which is active right now you can look at positive matches so positive matches shows all the auto configuration which is executed i mean which is live right now and there is something called negative matches which shows all the conditions which are not executed so you can say this is not executed because of this so it's this specific class is not found so same like this is not executed because this class is not found so similar to that you'd see that uh, there are a lot of stuff in here which you can go through trace on the other hand uh, shows trace log for the last uh, few requests let's say i'm firing a request right now uh, i'll just fire a request to let's say i fire a get request to survey one questions and i'm getting the response back over here you can see uh, the details of the request which was executed when was it executed what is the method what is the path what was the request what is the response that is sent back what is the status of it all the details you can see it as part of the trace so this <coughs> kind of stores response headers response i mean all the uh, activity that is happening on the server for the last few requests that's the trace for you the health shows uh, things like disk free space so the total space on the disk how much is free what is the threshold warning and things like that the mappings show what are all the different mappings like things like the uh, services which are exposed so you can see that this slash welcome slash service uh, survey id questions which method is uh, it being exposed which bean and which a method and all that kind of stuff the environmental endpoint the environment env endpoint shows all the details about the environment what version of java is being used what is its configuration what's the class path details about the system and the little bit of application configuration information as well all this information is exposed at the env endpoint and the beans endpoint exposes all the spring beans that are created we looked at it earlier as well. So to summarize, there are a lot of endpoints which are exposed by Spring Boot Actuator. And these endpoints provide you a lot of useful details to monitor the health of the applications. These are really useful to monitor the health of the application. And uh, these can also be monitored through things like JMX and kind of uh, create alerts around them. The last useful endpoint is metrics. So metrics provides you a lot of metrics about the environment. So how much memory is available, how much um, like how much memory is made available to the application, how much memory is free, like all the dynamic information, threads, and all that kind of stuff, as well as it 
tells you how many times specific URLs are being caused. So counter status 200 for actuator is 17. So the URI actuator returned back a response status of 217 times. This is kind of very useful information to have. Let's say I'm filing in a request. Let's say I'm seeing a post request to this URL and it comes back with an unsupported media type. When I refresh the metrics, the response type is 415. When I refresh the metrics, you can see that uh, there's a counter status survey survey ID questions 415, there's one. So it kind of keeps data track of how many times a specific response type is given back from a specific URI. So how is the service behaving? So is the service throwing up a lot of errors? Uh, all that kind of stuff can be monitored by this metric stuff. So it kind of monitors by the endpoint. So there you go. In this step, we looked at different endpoints which are exposed by the actuator. And we also use the HAL browser to kind of browse through the whole thing. This is really useful stuff when you deploy applications in production. You don't want a lot of this data to fall in irresponsible hands. So we would definitely need to secure these uh, URLs with proper authentication and authorization. We'll look at uh, how to do that with Spring Security in some, some of the next steps. But for now, uh, the actuator URLs provide us with a lot of information about, I mean, it's basically metadata. It's you have an application and you want to monitor it. So all the data that Spring Actuator exposes will make you to will help you to easily monitor this stuff. Until the next